Hello, welcome to Cosmic Heart Conversations podcast with me, Georgie Dragonfly, and we're now joined with Suzanne Amara, and she's now going to welcome herself into this space. So welcome. Hello. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much for having me today. It's lovely, it's a pleasure to be here. So would you like me to introduce myself? Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was hoping you would do that. <laughs> so my name is Suzanne Amara and I'm a conscious conduit uh, creator with this universal energy. I hold space in a number of ways for that creation through art, through the medium of art, through sharing my perspectives and my experiences in life through through the internet and social media and working with a, a wider collective field of energy to facilitate journeys and hold space for people in a different mediums through events and through holding sessions where people can explore who they are and help with that process of becoming conscious and unified in their way of being so coming back to their bodies and helping in different ways um, different structures around those things so I have quite a varied role in life now but mostly just here as a being and as a being of love and connectivity and I enjoy sharing that so thank you for having me today mm. well, thank you for being here and bringing all of that into this space for others to feel feel and where did this really start for you because this deep understanding for yourself has obviously been a journey yes well it's been a lifelong uh, canvas mm. in the making and it's mm. ongoing mm. it doesn't start and it doesn't stop it's life it's called life um, I didn't expect or ever dream that I would be here right now in this moment uh, with the awareness or experience that I have um, and lived a very conventional what I would call a conventional life although what life really is conventional we're just kind of playing um, when we can be aware of it more but yeah I had a very conventional life and um, you know fell into that kind of structure of just needing to survive um, just like every human and had a had a conventional life I was married uh, had a long very long-term relationship from 19 years old and uh, had two children I raised them did lots of different jobs and roles exploring and um, wasn't particularly spiritual but I was questioning so I always had a questioning mind so I was always exploring and um, now I'm looking back I, I was very awake when I was little mm -hmm. um, but shut down around five years old I just clammed it up because of the circumstances of my family and experience there so it was very traumatic and then I had lots of experiences and they are the sort of conventional experiences that humans have uh, with coping with uh, very extreme circumstances so I had a poor mental health uh, lots of conditions with my body uh, illnesses um, I was overcompensating in many different ways fractured dissociated and um, you know had really constructed a life of safety and security and then in 2012 I was called from what I would call my soul and I didn't know what that was or why but I felt like if I didn't do what I did I was going to die that was the mm. thought in my head and, and looking back it probably had happened before but I had ignored it or created busyness around it but I think in 2012 there was a harmonic convergence, there was a convergence of energy which shifted the earth and obviously now we're seeing that playing out and I took a journey to a sacred site in the UK and to Stonehenge, it was very uncharacteristic, 
not something I would do and without uh, showing because we'd be here all day <laughs> uh, too much into that it it stimulated something in me and I had a very very deep experience where I kind of got sick and was in a stupor for three days but defragmented my consciousness for it felt like billions of years I mean just outside of anything that was normal and when I came back <laughs> to my regular life I just wasn't the same person mm -hmm. and so everything started to unravel there and uh, I resisted it for another three or four years like even worse than I'd done before and then I gradually started to come round. I adopted um, much more of a regular meditative practice so stillness and I created that space inside enough so that I could hear what was going on inside trying to unravel what was going on inside it was very confusing uh, because I was remembering things and it stepped up then and I was uh, having lots of experiences with extraterrestrials and other dimensions and seeing things in our world when I was just walking around in nature and feeling things talking to me like the trees or the water yes. other people's thoughts and um, this was very disturbing to me so I had to then underpin that because I am quite a logical person and that was my safe cave for life. I started to really, because of my work, look at how I could integrate that. So I learned, I learned and then I sat with it in silence and it's been a gradual process of integration, shadow integration and becoming accepting that our world that we have grown up in and the conventions that we have as a as a human our emotions and our thoughts are largely not ours and that we are we create constructs to adapt to them and call it life so that's that's how i've come to kind of integrate and bring this into the human process something very large the concept of god or source um, as everything being creation and love and then meeting it in the human body uh, as I'm sure you're aware, that is quite a big undertaking. <laughs> Indeed it is. And when you were in that period of time where it was really, you know, like you said, talking to the trees and hearing thoughts, was you quite um, isolated with this experience or did you have other people around you? Did you seek out community? in that time? In the early stages, no. I had, um, I mean, I had friends that were spiritual. I went to a yoga class and a meditation class, but when I was trying to talk about what I was experiencing, they'd look at me quizzically like I was going nuts. Some people, you know, had their own views about what that was. And, I felt very isolated and even uh, I trained in Reiki. I mean, I say I opened and started, I started my healing kind of journey mm, um, around about 2000. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been going on a long time, but I was very uh, clinically or mentally focused. I was working in clinical holistic therapy. So it was very kind of evidential <laughs> yeah. um, and questioned the existence of God at all. So I was very conflicted. So I had a structure, but the structures were um, existing in where I'd been. And so, yes, I felt very, very unusual. And I would ask people, have you seen moving geometry in trees? And they'd be like, were you taking some uh, medicine? Mm -hmm. You know, were you taking some drugs? And I'm like, no, I was just walking my dog. Mm -hmm. That was my life. I, I was just, uh, it was every day life. And so, yeah, my friends were very regular. They, I wouldn't talk to them about this, no. And I thought there was something wrong with me um, or that I might be going crazy. Um, and particularly, 
uh, even in 2012, I didn't tell anyone for six months. I, the first person I told about that experience was my mum because I couldn't hold it in anymore. I'd, just, I'd been coping. I was coping, struggling. Had, um, it was a very difficult period. It was different. By the time I got to 2016, I, I met lots of people that were more open. And although at first I wasn't meeting people that would understand me, I very quickly, because of now obviously I understand that it, it's, it's almost like we, we have preordained ourselves to when we're going to do this journey yeah. before we come into the human body. Yeah. We make these we make these agreements with our soul as to how things progress. So this, I accept that I just chosen these things. So in twenty twelve, I met myself. I came, and I always thought I saw an angel with pink hair, but only towards the end of last year did I realise that it was me. I time travelled to meet myself and uh, touch my forehead and wake myself up, send myself to sleep. So we. We move uh, in these spaces that I, by the time I got to 2016, people literally walked into my life like they do. We hear their stories all the time. The perfect people walked in to support the process. So when I had a very big, very sudden jump in my consciousness, so this was, it was the equivalent of maybe of, you know, if people take mushrooms or some sort of plants that my consciousness was opening to see these things in my regular life it would break down in, into fractal geometry i would see light ships i would see huge beings walking around maybe 30 40 meters tall in the same mm. space uh, different time periods um, it was a little bit out of control at times because i wasn't stable you know i haven't stabilized the fields in my body or um, my mental fields were too active still so mm -hmm. it would, it's like uh, trying to hit something moving very fast so people came into my life to help me to slow to teach me and to reassure me that I wasn't going crazy because if I if I hadn't have had these people come in my life I might very well have gone into a medical route because by this time my uh, partner was basically telling me that I was dissociating and I was having, um, you know, a, a kind of psychosis mm -hmm. uh, and my children obviously were fairly distressed because their mother was um, unable to operate. Like I was like a different person, yeah. like a d totally different person. So yeah. it's, I think having those people come in was a game changer for me because although they didn't always understand, you know, and I, when I'm trying to say a bit later on, I'm seeing codes, I'm seeing um, data, I'm seeing geometry uh, that is coming in my field and I can feel it in you. And they haven't got a clue what I'm talking about, but they're open to listen mm -hmm. and just hold a space. And that would made such a big difference that, that although I met a lot of people who were not open, and the other way, they go into fear, obviously, when things are new, people fear them. But the, the people around me were supportive enough to always seem to point me in the right direction. And slowly, it just grew. And of course, now, we're only, oh, four years later, and look at the community mm -hmm. that is growing now. Like, people are embracing the experiences and finding one another across the world uh, automatically and it because we are linked energetically we find each other perfectly mm -hmm. so yes it was very isolating at first but now it isn't so much isolating uh, but it still is because everybody has their own every human is having their own self-interpreted experience of the fields so mm -hmm. it's always going to be unique. The adaptation is how open can we be to listen to the commonality and feel it, feel in our bodies, because our body is obviously the instrument through which we have to bring the experiences, and that's where it falls down <laughs> so if we don't um, mm. adapt. Yeah. And so... With that, you did find, you found the people 
have assisted, but there's definitely going to be something that happened within that space on your own journey that you discovered um, to be more embodied and to ground and to balance this opening. Um, so how did, was, was there anything pivotal in that space that you could talk about? Yeah, uh, meditation and, and meditation in different contexts. So what is meditation? It's present. So for me, building a base with presence and introspection and authenticity and accountability were the spaces through which I've learned. So a daily meditative practice of silence and with that gratitude so gratitude is an opener even when i've been struggling thank you for the experiences so relate to relate to every experience every thought form even if it's very difficult and it often is because we hit we challenge our emotions and the things we hold in don't know to come out so to be grateful for that and to turn it around so the body and my body as the recorder and having recorded all these things in life now needs to ease from a space where where you get fixated you know in the experiences into an open space so having breathing so learning to breathe properly mm. and to use that breath to help bring your conscious space into a slowing or an observance of my own inner workings so what is forming in my head <laughs> what is that silly little brain doing and uh, how am i feeling what is the emotion that i'm feeling and then allowing that instead of denying it and allowing those parts of me which i separated from and not enable not listen to to have a foundation to speak and to have a voice so meditation and breathing and breath work have been the foundations I, I trained as a mindfulness practitioner and a clinical hypnotherapist uh, nearly a decade ago and that really helped me as well all yeah. those trainings helped me to form these foundations as I say I, I trained in all these different things like healing and body work and uh, cognitive techniques like NLP, uh, EFT, uh, hazening, things like this to help myself before I went through the process and so I was well resourced, very well resourced but now I know why I was well resourced because mm -hmm. I, I never connected the dots uh, until it was when I really really needed those foundations and I consider myself a student daily daily and uh, always open to learning more but presence for me is the core because our brains and our mind is so easily distracted and our chemistry which forms our emotions and the senses we get in our body again are very distracting and we've got all these programs that we believe are the way that we are so much of our journey is just to be able to be open to looking at where that is formed and bring it back into the body because consciousness is a wide field you know mm -hmm. we are things that we're experiencing multi-dimensionally or um, where you just feel like this heart expanding connection with everything whatever word we give this connection um, where you can fall into ideologies, beliefs, and presence gives us the ability to witness, to move from the experiencer and to be in the story and in the charge and in the drama, to be the witnesser of those things. And that leads us to see how our parts of our consciousness form those experiences and influences and then that means when we take that out into the world we're less influenced and 
we have a presence and a stillness in which we can conduct ourselves with some compassion and empathy, uh, with uh, a way to respond in such a way that we are not reacting. We're giving space to our behaviours and our conduct and our behaviour and the way we interact with the world. So yes, I feel these two very simple and very free um, ways of being are very helpful. And everything that goes around it, having good resources, but being well structured and having good resources around you as well, making an effort to not be withdrawn. Mm. Yes, that's quite an interesting one because I imagine with all of the um, artwork that you create, you probably spend a vast amount of time, you know, on your own and doing that. But you're keeping that balance with getting out, seeing people, still being in the community um, that's around you as well. Yes, it's very easy now with uh, online, you know, with the circumstances of the, you know, the signal of the, the world last year was uh, stay home, you know, yes. stay home and stay safe. So these are the two key um, kind of indicators to stay home which is go within go within to yourself uh, uh stay safe is to challenge all of the reasons you don't feel safe in the world mm -hmm. um and uh, and look at those you know it was an invitation uh, for us to do those things so getting out is extremely important uh, you can easily become wrapped up in the things that you are bringing you know my, my i'm committed full time i do not see what i do as a job in any way work it is devotion to being it's devotion to being and to be the best vessel that i can be for a full experience of life so mm -hmm. what is the point of me doing all of this and creating all of this stuff if i can't connect to other human beings then I, that would seem uh, a waste so I balance a lot of what I do with just being being talking to lots of people I, online um, uh, all around the world which is really you know a good way of getting out there so I, I, I get to talk to people and listen to what their experiences are and I value that and also just to ground it by my local community mm -hmm. uh, being out and uh, now putting down, you know, foundations for projects, real world uh, ideas and how we can bring this in. And I think there's going to be more and more of that. You know, the why do you go in terms of um, being more aware of the way our bodies work and our consciousness works and multidimensionally being aware then the only what the only thing we can do is bring this in and make it applicable to our lives so to me the, what, the foundation of all of this is communication learning to move from this codependency that we've had and it can be the same with any spiritual ideology as well we can just slip in and you know be influenced you know some great master told me i've got to do all these things well it's like no some great master didn't tell you that you've got to do all these great things you created that reality for yourself it's a uh, really understanding that we are that open mm -hmm. we are the creators and the the master creator being and we've just forgotten that because the mind brain has controlled our way of being so being with other people who don't have your views who see the world in a completely different way, um, who maybe are all in their triggers and fears. I, I, I find that being able to walk with this strong and open and compassionate and graceful pillar through life is, for me, that's the biggest gift. It's bigger than anything that I do. It's not about what I do. It's become bigger, it's become about just being, about being that space, even if you just sit in a cafe and strike up a conversation with a stranger, every word will be a gift, everything will be signalling something, even if you're just listening. 
there is a property of con when you become conscious as a funnel for creator creation that in a way it doesn't matter what you do it's what you are mm -hmm. and just accepting that yes and just being that's a really profound <laughs> just like letting that sink in letting that go in into the field <laughs> Yeah, when, when I speak like that, mm. I don't feel like I'm speaking particularly from my um, personal perspective. Something that you say, it's the thing about when we can step aside, when we've, when we've known ourselves enough to just step aside as well. It doesn't stop us being egotistical, <laughs> but mm. it, that's a joke. Um, you know... But just to step aside when there's an answer like that, that you can just move aside and the energy speaks more through your mouth. Mm. Yeah. Just humbly. Mm. And so for those that are experiencing this feeling right now and potentially wondering, you know, how do they access this or become into that state of presence and allowing um the source and being the vessel for that um would you have any any perception that you could bring forward for that or even maybe an experience of when you felt comfortable expressing in that way Yeah, I find that the the energy of your true nature, so God source potential, but is just human beings are like machines. It's a it's just a vessel. It's a biological, glorious miracle <laughs> of a vessel. Mm -hmm. And your spirit, your what you ascribe to be your presence is spirit and it is something which never dies and it is something which is constant and we fall into this character that we think is us you know our self-identity georgia suzanne and the journey is to realize that that is just a very small part of your wholeness and the wholeness is everything, it's everything. So humans have adapted to a very strange idea of what love is. It, love is vastly experienced as control on earth and in our bodies, just by the mechanism of being helpless when you're born and whether you receive love or not uh, as, a, as a baby. And so our perspective of wanting to connect often comes from a deep need for connection. So that's why we invented God. That's why we invented our human God made ideologies of God and all other names, any names, all names. Mm. Uh, for this thing and that is just simply divine intelligence it cannot be contained or named or controlled and that's really what we feel but we can't we have to make it into something so we create all the creation that's what humans do so in order to connect with the center beyond that is to open to love yourself so it starts with presence, as I said, you can't, if you're not present, it's going to be difficult because you'd be so distracted or you'll go mm -hmm. off and believe in, you know, um, there's some higher power that's going to save me from myself. Well, unfortunately, it can come as a shock to people when they realise that no one's going to save you. 
it has to you have to save yourself and and that is by loving yourself by creating and nurturing practices very small day by day without too much ex expectation of of what you wherever you are going so not to try and futurize or blame yourself for the person that you have been in the past as this is to bring yourself into a powerful presence of being and then to once you can get to that place of just being here that's all you've got to do there is like you don't have to be anyone other than what you are in this moment now not nothing that's been fed to you in social media or some influencer or a, a space that you think you should be to be successful or loved i want people to love me no just be yourself be here can you be here mm -hmm. just show up for your own heart and your own self it, it, it makes me cry when i realize how much i resisted this for so many years and i created so much creation <laughs> and energy to push that away so this is like the if i was taking a i'll try and keep it open because I, I don't want to fall into any kind of uh although it have i have had very direct experiences with these energies but just to say it's like the hand of some creation energy of love just reaching out and always holding you and instead of pushing that away you you're like a child and it, when it won't be held it's taught that is the human consciousness and then eventually ah oh, it relaxes it gives and it's you allow yourself to be held and you're not being held by something existentially or they will feel this is the divine mother or the divine father or some other you know mechanism like angelics or uh, ascended masters or nature or you know something because our brains kind of need that structure but we just feel loved and that's because we are that love mm -hmm. that's the softening so how do people take these steps is every moment instead of trying to make a huge construct stop looking ahead stop blaming yourself for what you've been don't be in shame let the grief come let yourself feel emotion it is not low vibrational or non-spiritual to feel anger to feel emotional charge to release things from your body just do it with care love yourself every day honor yourself every day be grateful and conduct yourself in the measure of the way in which the universe will reflect back to you stop being a victim stop yes. being privileged entitled open and soften to everything and be humble before yourself so that the whole world is just a reflection and, and really take it take that in and honor all the people in your lives honor every reflection even the difficult times and the words which have passed learn to let go to not hold on and create space even if it's just a few minutes a few times a day in a busy life we've all got commitments some people have a lot on their plates and sometimes lives are very stressful especially right now um, in the spiritual world there's a lot of bypassing people go and hide in things and i think people do this in life as well um, creating little amounts of space just to be still two or three minutes just creates a habit of, of i'm giving this moment to myself lock yourself in a toilet i used to call that the three minute miracle it's the only safe place when you're at work <laughs> excuse yourself from the office and go to the toilet and sit there for three to five minutes 
and be with yourself. So just to weave this into daily life. Yeah. Um, I think these are just foundations for health, health and well-being. And with that comes the rest. If we try and strive for the uh, high amount of, uh, uh, you know, yeah. I'm going to become realised, then you're just going to continually fall down. Nobody mm -hmm. can know that. It's not something that you invite. No. It just comes. Yeah. No. I, I really love that. It is tr so true um, in my own heart and feeling that anyway, is that we are sometimes, yeah, jumping higher hurdles than we can, that <laughs> are longer than our legs. <laughs> and if we just start at the beginning and just really simple simple mindfulness well-being self-care and nourishment that actually so often is specifically we can say about the western culture is is everything so fast-paced and we have so much that access to things that we can kind of jump forward even without realizing because we see you know, if someone was to stumble across your artwork for the first time, <laughs> they might just start diving straight in there, you know, rather than going, right, oh, I haven't even researched mindfulness or... <laughs> and so, and that could be really exciting and hold a lot of excitement. But actually, if we just hold ourselves uh, in that present moment and just being still with ourselves, and really seeing what's for our highest and greatest good in that now moment. Um, it allows more to probably unfold, <laughs> even from that space. Mm. Well, that's what light language is. You know, mm. uh, the, the way this was given to me, uh, again, was most unexpected. <laughs> I wasn't expecting, I didn't even know what light language was. Mm. Um, I'd gone on a training with an incredible human being uh, to try and understand what was happening galactically for me. And um, this was a healing training and we were having a cacao ceremony, uh, having been in the most intensive few days. And um, in that ceremony, I surrendered enough i think i started to trust maybe or trust the facilitator and the heart medicine of the cacao opened my heart and together with the frequencies i was just able to for the first time connect with a conduit which i would consider to be like a home consciousness and went into a, period, a space where i met these angelic avian beings that were like liquid light so they would morph in and out of um a body and then there was just liquid like color light moving and they spoke to me from the inside of my body like my whole body was vibrating and they and, the, and they just said you're going to bring languages back to earth which are new to earth and <laughs> this was just just crazy I mean I came I went into another experience where I was shown I had to recontract myself in a way um, so it was like a coming back in experience where I had to accept um, perhaps that I hadn't been living my life in full purpose I was put before it and given an opportunity to see if I chose my full soul embodiment for this incarnation so i wanted to live as much um expansion as i could or completion is more about completion than anything else that it would have consequences uh, for my life as in i couldn't continue with where i was living so that took a uh, center stage and the thing about the light language just fell away Mm -hmm. And I, I sort of just dismissed it like you do. And then it came. But light, so light language, as it evolved through me, it cut through all of the things that our mind wants to give us. So all of the story that our mind creates about what something is. So um, I, 
I have you you won't be able to see it on a podcast but I've got some iconic pictures that people I love my two favorites are the dragons and the lions so you look at a lion and people go oh it's a lovely picture of a lion and they feel so drawn to it but they don't know why they're drawn to it why does this little picture of a lion draw me so strongly well that's because it's not something that your eyes are telling you your eyes are going to see the lion and your brain tells you you're seeing the lion but what's going on underneath is you're having a conversation with energy with a divine intelligence with a collective cosmic intelligence and your soul is talking and giving you a direction to pay attention here for something to unlock so the pictures or artwork is just a method of communicating huge amounts of information mm -hmm. and people can come in front of it and start to have these conversations but the moment your mind gets engaged it's gone you cannot uh, contain this it moves you so it's a very very rapid way to shift and that's why we've started to develop because we've opened and the frequencies of earth and of our solar system and generally of our whole galaxy and cluster of galaxies it, it are moving through very vast charged particular uh, energy so mm. photonic energy and multi-dimensional energy so everything's existing in this space of creation but actually it's still in itself um we'd have to get into another conversation about that i'm just gonna i'm not gonna say that um <laughs> about what creation is because it's again it's a sort of a vastly illusionary state that the paintings and the art are just a medium or light language is a vo voice is just our soul talking it cuts out of the mind so we don't have to make constructions so much because that's what a lot of the ways we've been and the ways we've wanted to develop our consciousness is I'll take this modality or I'll take on these specific things and do this in a specific way and I have to do it in this specific way in order to have this specific outcome. Mm -hmm. What's developing is outside of those frameworks. We're not going to continue developing in those frameworks. We need to open our souls and our souls don't contain themselves. They intuit work intuitively. They're fluid. The dynamic is fluid. It's in, it's in motion. It, you were given and you trust exactly what you're given in that moment. So that's only how light language can evolve. It's the language of the universe moving through you mm. and expressing. So it can seem very strange to people. But for me, artwork is good because it meets everybody and anyone can look at a picture and they can say, oh, that's a nice picture of a of a lion or mm. of a dolphin or of a, it's a nice, pretty picture on a wall and just enjoy it as that. But they're still having this nourishment and this conversation and yeah. they don't even know. And then one day when it's the right time without me evangelizing or trying to push anything on oh that it'll just pop the keys are always there and they're always available and that the way that the the way that we work as a collective is just to provide an opportunity it's open and available mm -hmm. and there and it always happens at the right time and in the in the what in the right way even if sometimes it doesn't seem that way because the fallout mm -hmm. of letting go of things you know can be quite powerful for people mm, yeah and because i must say when i've seen actually specifically the line that you've just spoken about um i actually had a really emotional response to that one in particular and um i think often people who have yeah no understanding of of what it actually is can have emotional response to to the to the pictures because of it really working on that cellular level um and i'm also curious which is kind of a little bit diverted but um for those that are kind of 
wanting to do this sort of thing not necessarily wanting is not the right word but yes i suppose people will be <laughs> where did this develop and um, the actual artwork itself because I suppose, did you initially have an iPad and pen <laughs> and go, right, I'm going to draw this, I'm going to create this. And maybe it was a co-creation with, with other beings. <laughs> it was very interesting. It's very lovely. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, following on from uh, what, I, what I shared about um, having that experience on the training, mm -hmm. um, it was only a few months uh, later I heard somebody speaking light language and I, much like you, literally just fell to the floor. My whole body just fell to the floor and all this stuff started flowing out of me. I was like, <laughs> and I was thought, oh my gosh, I'm possessed. <laughs> what is this? Um, so firstly, it was vocal. So there was lots, it was like trying to take the lid off a, off a can of pop, you know and so much flowing out and then I could feel it in other people I could feel their languages and speak to them in their languages and they'd suddenly cry I'd just go um in mid-conversation just start mm -hmm. talking light language and they'd just start crying going I don't even know why I'm crying um so this was all very new to me um it took about a year I did was doing all kinds of things I was trying to share about what this was because I basically didn't have a clue and I was just trying to find some reason um trying to reason with it trying to understand where it's coming from all these cosmic beings you know and um there was just so much it's impossible to kind of convey and, yeah. uh, and just a few words but it's been a you know i've had contact with several different um in the first instance uh maybe sort of more familiar extraterrestrial groups and then um I, as i was more trusting being in a council of light so i was meeting with much more than what we ever could probably conceive of life different um oh some of our films kind of allude to it you know that we live in a very um busy the beautiful universe of creation just that we 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 sort of cordoned in our consciousness mm -hmm. and not to experience it and um so this was very intensive because i was communicating in languages which would be terrestrial for those planets so light language can be confused because we're also carrying cosmic terrestrial languages we're carrying ancient orders of languages um, we have a vast reservoir of languages so what is light language can be very easily confused um, with terrestrial languages from our other lineages uh, so light language can be that but i feel that true light language is a consciousness of source and it is where even that falls away and so any any sort of phonetic base container language that's just a terrestrial cosmic language from remembering our lineages light language in its truest nature is just the universal consciousness moving in such a way that it finds a construct so i didn't know what that meant i'm only saying this in my current understanding or mm. understanding and, and again it's open it's always evolving so after a while i was around 2018 i was very i was very stagnant in terms of my creation I, I've had periods of massive creativity um, and when I look back I've always been drawing codes I draw, draw them on my school books I was always very creative it's very sporadic because it's wrapped around your heart and my heart was traumatized so it was uh, like a push-pull I'd have vast mm -hmm. uh, productive periods of creativity and then a, a desert and um, after I, I went to college, to university, and I did three-dimensional design, I was very creative during that period. And again, I was drawing light language on the vessels I was creating in clay, but I didn't realise that I was doing this. Um, so it was all locked inside. It's all potential. This is the why I, when I'm 
facilitating people now I talk about creation potential we've all got this potential we bring mm. it in we're, we're star seeds so everyone has this and I've taken people with no creativity at all to be highly creative because it's about what we are moving within our hearts so as I had my own journey because that's all we do is we share our own <laughs> experience mm. so as I was all resisting I um I traveled in Peru in South America and it was on that journey as I was having um, a very deep experience with the land there and traveling. I started to make sketches and these were the first light codes. And so I drew a lot on paper to start with. I was scared to share them because like the language, people were having huge reactions when I spoke, you mm. know, and sometimes people would see dark things they, you know, they, they would have experiences where they were like feeling the, um, you know, feelings. And I was like, oh my God, like, what am I doing to people? You know, <laughs> don't hurt anybody. And uh, so I had to learn a lot about how energy works because mm -hmm. when you hold a conduit open and you are giving um, a measure of that harm harmony, then the things have to come up like a vomit, like an emetic. So what what needs to sort of happen around this is all kinds of education around language, stability, integration, love. And because it's only because in the Western world we haven't been taught this. We should be taught this in like from being a toddler. <laughs> like, mm. you know, it, it would just be part of our way of being and we would be really well integrated and we wouldn't have the problems that we've got. So the language came and I started to trust the drawings and then I was dreaming uh, of these grids and geometries and they wouldn't they would go in my head and I wouldn't be able to get them out they would stay they would come and go but then they would stay and they stayed long enough so I could draw them so there was a communication going on here still didn't really trust it or understand it but then one day um, I remember it very well in the Lions Gate in uh, towards the end of 2018. I um, sat down for two days and channeled my first grid, and it was a Lumerian Atlantean uh, balancing grid. So these are two pivotal kind of historical civilizations, and it was bringing the, that balance uh, into the waters of our planet so that we could move kind of past the wounds of trust and I didn't again I was all very naive I was just like drawing this grid and it was full of uh, symbols uh, painted it and so I was doing a lot on paper and then in 2019 I'd done a little bit of my mobile phone I was playing with symmetry apps and you know you see it now lots of people are playing with the uh, around with symmetry and I would find that very stimulating and uh, I didn't know why and uh, then I had a very strong inkling that I needed to buy a digital tablet and I wasn't I wasn't very passionate about that I've got to say I'm not really a huge thing of technology so I was resisting this and I just kept setting it aside and also I was in didn't have abundance of flow so my heart was still closed I was still blaming money you know all of the things that we do as humans um so it would have been a challenge because it was all the money I had kind of saved up uh, to buy this thing and then I kind of had this challenge where a friend just basically got exasperated with me and said, look, you know, it's clear that you've been directed to do this and I'm going to buy this technology for you if you don't do it yourself. And that was enough to motivate me because I'm like, no, I'll do it my own self. Mm. <laughs> As my daughter uh, used to give to me when she was younger, those were her first kind of words. I'll do it my own self. Um, so I did and I only had it for a day. And it was literally like I just picked up the pen and um, I asked somebody um, in a group, like, what app do you use? So I just thought, I'll try this one out. 
and I started, I think I bought four or five codes the first day, uh, they look like they took hours, uh, they took me an hour, because <laughs> um, it was just so fast, and that was giving permission or consent for the collective to start working through me, and through those codes, so through the drawing of those codes, that started the increase in shadow integration work, so I could no longer kind of deny the parts that were um, I was not bringing in, bringing home to be connected with of myself and also an acceleration of consciousness. So I was I was doing the codes for myself in order to become more of a conduit. It's been although I share them, it's been the personal journey because this yes. is what we agreed to. So I, I didn't train uh, to do it. It just happened. And um, sometimes I look at what I've created and I'm just like, how did my hand create that? Mm. How did it create that artwork? I, I only create when I'm, when there's energy to move me in the same way that I write. I only write when there's, you know, my hands will type themselves pretty much. Um, and gradually that was a, that was a, a journey, it's another journey mm. really, just to meet with a higher level of consciousness. So it wasn't, it seems outside because that's how we reference things. So we feel, oh, the codes are coming in. They're not coming in from anywhere. They're evolving through us because we are them. We are the code. So I am the code. When I feel the constructs of the energy, I have to become it in order to um, to, to realise it, to, to live in it, in order to manifest it through. And so it's quite an involved process. I'm going to share a lot more about this yeah. now online. I'm going to start doing much more to share the process of what this really is because we're working as a collective you know mm. I, I am a, a Suzanne earth being human being but from a collective of vast resource potential of consciousness funneled through this body I'm not unusual everyone is the same mm. <laughs> construct uh, but this is just sharing it in, in a way which I think hopefully people can enjoy, just yeah. enjoy it and yeah, um, yeah find, I find creation to be a very good medium for that marriage between uh, science yes. and presence and uh, the feeling, the existential thing that you can't find word for. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that that's going to really help a lot of people. Um, you know, I think that's something that a, a, a quite a few people I can imagine and I can feel are searching for that, you know. And um, yeah, so ho holding that will be wonderful. Um, is that something that's coming along or is it here right now? Yeah, it's all, I mean, it's continually developing. We do it in our groups. Mm. Um, I've changed tack a little bit, um, yeah. just with wherever the energy's flowing. Um, we've obviously got a lot of help and assistance at the moment, support um, in a kind of wider level of our collective consciousness because yeah. it's the very quick awakening process that's happening on yeah. the earth. It looks uh, in a certain way, but really it's designed for us to to uh, move out of a, you know an ideological. Um, controlling victim uh, perpetrator kind of that Cartman drama triangle mm -hmm. uh, existence and uh, move to a much more open position of, of presence so yes it, it's coming along and my work has moved much more towards bringing a story along with the code so I've been making some videos which are on YouTube which give a um, more of a story towards the codes so people can have a journey with what they're experiencing and keep them short because people um, obviously um, in a fast-paced world 
of their attention is short um, when you're first coming across things. So it's just an easy way, you know, it doesn't take up much time, it's three or four minutes. Mm. I think that's helpful. And also to, yeah, to bring people in and to share the process, to just talk openly. It takes a lot of courage. I was very hesitant about talking about anything like this, extraterrestrials, multidimensionality, God, angels, you know, um, this is part of my daily life, dragons, beings, so it's just part of my daily life, and I was worried, I guess, like we all are, that people would judge me, mm -hmm. and that, that people would form opinions of me and some of those might not be very kind or very nice and I, I because I haven't integrated my uh, self I've self learned to self-regulate I found conflict very difficult to experience and that kept me from shining mm -hmm. so my fear of being judged kept me from being myself and shining <laughs> and loving and sh you know just being out there and that's what I want to help people with the most it's just to be here and to not be afraid to be your self and be the love that you are but also to have healthy boundaries mm. to learn when to say no and to know what is your emotion and and um, what is someone else's projection yeah to, to really find that so a lot of what we're doing is with something called the pillar of light or it'll evolve over the next year more and more and to really show simple ways we can come into that pillar of light to keep ourselves healthy and to know who we are and then to shine out and to create that that wonderful space of uh, community within our body and then from family and uh, moving into flow so we call that quantum dynamic flow it's a way of life mm. and a way of health beautiful Thank you. And with that, I'm wondering whether you have um, like a transmission that you would like to share um, for those that are listening. Yeah, it would be lovely. Yeah. To, uh, share and share a little space and a little time for a moment so just to invite anybody uh, that's listening or having this experience in your now moment if you just breathe into your body while we're talking and, and don't try to decipher or to over mentalize the words just let them wash over you as if it's like the breeze on your skin imagine if you just close your eyes that you're just in the beautiful space and those words can wash over you and through you and it's your heart that receives and your heart that feels the words Ara ul kavrali ki ayani sura el yasua Nur ayam manutur vui in hin nasara lo halibe Mur al ushin ya ushun ira harve ki an e asa i isu ya nurak ashuna Era an e se isu ye isia una aia Alla rusea un bral il faia, ella ora ilia ere al ush, nar al cat e anta hara ashun ha, umate kuyi ia ora alia sura asht, ushkiara onia hash. And speaking to that core inside the inner strength. To remember your connection with the nature of the world, with the earth, with the cosmos, with your heart. Ikia atana ukurusa ukika, ikuna itua ki ataka nama un akia utakama ika wakia, etana ukamatia ukarba i asua naki i 
atala akusha ira wakanuta ya fakia matakura shayana ushaya 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 ni akikara wasua healu ratu naki maniki ia ura io tue murut ui tititi murut ui tititi brut ia tititi brut uasa kutututurutia Itete ia o shikriya mu kurki eto to 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 ia mu kutu ia pika murutu rata kete tia prutu to 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 ia kriya mu shikriya te te ia part iu rut u to 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 o asiko to 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 o to 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 ia ru asha asha esha ua hela orala i sun tara e nankia e ashalu nasa hea Na esha eka ea ura Sae shi, sae shi, o se So just letting that wash over you letting it land into the fabric of your being where it has landed all the little points in space and time where that has touched your soul in some way and a beautiful way to receive is just to give gratitude so feel grateful for anything which has landed anything which was resonant and Inviting that to really seed and to nourish you in a way which you can meet, in a way which you can unfold in your own perfect time and in your own perfect way. And to understand that this is all simply a reflection of you. Everything that you feel is a reflection and a potential which rests inside of you. And the journey of life, the journey of coming to know yourself is a journey which takes courage just to show up, just to show up and be here. And it starts with a simple breath. And a simple moment. And the time is now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suzanne. That was incredible. Everything disappears when I go into that state of consciousness. I can't see the computer at the moment or anything. Just light. Just, just light. Mm. It's, just, it's an incredible feeling to feel that move through. And feel a connection with the universe. It's very humbling, mm. not being so selfish, and uh, yeah, it's just so beautiful. Mm. It truly is. I mean, I'll probably what listen back <laughs> and uh, really, truly take that in and receive because it was very beautiful. Mm. And uh, in your own time, if you have any specific offerings that you'd just like to let anybody know now um, so they can be in this space a little bit longer with you. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, you can contact me uh, in different mediums. So on Facebook, I am Suzanne Amara. And you can follow me on uh, my Facebook 
page and on my sharings I am setting up and now have a telegram channel t.me forward slash Suzanne Amara and it's S-U-S-A-N-N-E-A-M-A-R-A very easy to find and I share much more on the telegram than I do on on that uh, other channel and uh, also my videos are on YouTube uh, under the light evolutionary and you can find me there and uh, I enjoy sharing in this way and then if you if you go on these channels you'll always be able to keep up to date with my services mm. and uh, I can point you in the right direction if you want to join our events or to take things a little more deeply perfect perfect because um I will add these onto the description of of the podcast um so you will be able to find them <laughs> and reach out and if there's anything specifically that um you would like to talk and reach out i'm sure suzanne would be there to hold space for you and, and myself um because there's so much uh you know in the podcast you know we can't always get into <laughs> but because it, it is vast isn't it so do feel called to do that and um, we're sending you all the love and anything else you can always again comment below and and uh, share your thoughts and feelings from from your experience we'd love to hear from you sending you all the love and we will see you next friday thank you